Okay, so um, homework, page 61, that's due today. Now, what I told you yesterday, um, this assignment is a short turnaround. I normally don't do this. I normally don't do a one-day turnaround for homework to be due. Here's the reason why I did it. All you had to do on this assignment was ignore all book directions. I want you to ignore everything the book asks for and just give me the names of those objects. That's all you had to do. That's what I explained to you yesterday in class. You had to give me the names of all these objects. You had to be as specific as you could. Okay, so you had to tell me, you know, is it a triangle? What specific type? Was it a quad? What specific type? Right, you had to be super specific. That's what I was talking about yesterday. Now, I will give you a little bit of time today in class to finish that up. You'll have plenty of time. The last two classes that came in, they had 20 minutes to work on it just to get it done, wrapped up. It should not, this assignment should not take you longer than 10 minutes. You literally look at a picture and go, oh, it's a quad, it's a rectangle, move on to the next question. That's all you have to do. Okay, does, is there any questions right now about what you have to do in this assignment? Okay, now even online, if you guys have questions, fire away. Uh, no one can hear you, only, only I can, so. Okay, uh, here's what we're doing today. Okay, we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna do a quick review of those vocab words. So if you've been gone the last couple days, you haven't seen any of these vocab, here's the words we discussed. So the polygons, the classifications of them. The first one was called a triangle. It's called a triangle, three-sided. There is how many types of triangles? Seven. Every triangle has two names to it. Okay, we'll go through those names of those triangles here in a minute. I'm gonna do, this is gonna be like the 30 second crash like review. Um, next one, quad. How many different types of quads did we have? What? Three major types, I agree. And then those had subcategories, correct? Now, um, quads are four-sided. Any four-sided figure on your homework, you'd automatically call it a quad, and then if it's a specific type, you have to tell me the rest of the words, okay? Pentagon is five-sided, right? Now, I'm gonna stop here just for a second. Any of these shapes could be convex or concave, because remember, concave is where they have dents in them. So. Uh, anyone. So even so, I know that some of the pictures get a little difficult. You just have to count the walls. Oh, it's got you know ten sides. Well, it's a decagon. It's concave. Okay, fine. It's got a little dent in it. So just be super specific. Now, hexagon six, heptagon is seven, uh, octagon is eight, nonagon is the word I want you to use for nine. Nonagon, um, and then ten is decagon. Hen decagon's eleven, and then dodecagon's twelve. What happens if you have more than twelve sides? Say it again? Yeah, 13 gone, 14 gone, 15 gone. Okay, questions with the naming system. Okay, again, that's all you're doing in your homework. It should have been super simple. Okay, you're not finding distances, you're not finding perimeter or area or whatever they ask for. I just want you to name the objects. We'll get to those formulas later. Now, triangles. Let's talk about those. We talked about the major types of triangles, right? Uh, triangles are three sided, they have three vertices. Every triangle, including this one, has two names. The reason why you call it by its side lengths or you call it by its angle measure. That's how you name triangles. So every term here has three different words you could pick from. And then there's an also a bonus word we talk about equiangular. Now, let's talk about the side lengths if you're gonna first name your triangle, because I know a lot of the pictures in the book were triangles, right? So if you're on a triangle and you're calling by its side lengths, what are the different words you could pick from? Say again? Right. Those would be by angles. I'll come back to that. I'll hold you on that one. Scaling. Scaling. Another word? Isosceles. Isosceles. And the next one. Right. Say it again? Right. Not a right. We'll come back to that. Let's say it again? Oh. Equilateral. Equilateral, yeah. Equilateral, all three sides. So when you first look at your picture, maybe you just need like a little piece of paper to kind of measure the walls. If all three walls are different, it's scaling triangles. If, if two walls match, it's isosceles. If all three, it's equilateral. So that's how you call by, you have to pick one of those three. Then once you pick your word, then you go to the next one. And that's where we'll come back to these others. So what do you name it by its angle measure? What was the one we said? The right. Right, what was another one that we said? Right. Oh, okay, you said right as well. Another one? A two. A cute and? A two. a two, so there's your three. And it's by the angle in the corners. So if all of them are less than 90, it's acute. If one of them is 90, it's a right, and if one of them is obtuse, it's obtuse. You can turn your picture, you can look, you can put your protractor down and measure if you're not quite sure. You just have to tell me the name of the specific triangle. And if you notice that all three angles match, you can call it equiangular as well. Questions? 
Okay, now, quads. A four-sided figure. So you look at your picture in the book, it's a quad. It could be special. Doesn't have to be. It could just be a quad. But if it's special, it's one of the three types, like Ben was saying here earlier, right? Could be a parallelogram. Walls are parallel. Could be a trapezoid. One, one pair is parallel. And then it could be a kite. I don't think you have any kites. We haven't defined that word yet. We'll see that in chapter six, back in like December or January time frame. Okay, but now let's get to the specific types. Like what are these? So if you're a parallelogram, it's because both pairs of walls are parallel. Both pair, right, left, up, down. The pink pearl eraser is a perfect example. Top, bottom, right, and left. You can look at the little shadowed edge. Those are parallel, right? It's a parallelogram. You can just see, you can kind of look and go, okay, they look parallel. Okay, you can sharpen. Second type was a trapezoid. Only one pair of walls are parallel. So here's the picture, right? Top and bottom are parallel, not the two other sides. The other two sides are tapered together. They kind of point in the same direction. So one pair of sides are parallel. So maybe you just look at your picture and go, oh, it's a trapezoid. Ooh, it's a parallelogram. But then if it's one of those, then it could be something more specific. Because maybe you looked at your parallelogram, where the walls are parallel, but you notice they have right angles in the corners. So if it has right angles in the corners, it's automatically a rectangle. Boom, 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 boom. If, if it doesn't have the right angles in the corners, maybe you just notice that the walls are parallel, but all four walls are the same length. Well, then it's a rhombus. And if that doesn't happen, maybe, maybe, it's, maybe, it's not, maybe it's not any of these, it's just a parallelogram. Maybe it's too elongated. But if it was special enough, it could have all the angles the same and the walls the same, and that would be your square. Okay, questions with all these terms. I'm giving you a super fast crash course. I'm hoping that people online are following along here. Sorry for those who are kind of on the Zoom. All right. And the last terms, if you're talking about a trapezoid, one pair of sides are parallel, right top and bottom, but it could be a special case of a trapezoid where maybe you notice that it's isosceles, two walls matched, and the other two are parallel. One pair is parallel, one pair is congruent. Those are all the terms we talked about up to this point. That was fair game for any of the homework questions. Questions. All right, now, let's get rid of this for right now. Okay. Let's get rid of that. All right. So, here's what we're doing now. Okay, this is the idea. What well, well, I want to do today is to intro the next section. Not, not go super in depth, just intro it. So what I'm going to put on the board is a vocab term I want you to know. It's in the next section. It's in section 1.7. But it's something that I want you to see today. Because I know you're, you're still working on this assignment. But I want you to know this word. Okay? This term is called a regular polygon. I'll let you write that term down. Regular polygon. A regular polygon. Now, this is going to be super deceiving because your brain's going to tell you one thing, and I'm going to tell you another thing here in a second. So, let's get the, the let's get the elephant out of the room on this one. Okay, what does the word regular mean in English? Say it again? Normal. Normal. Plain. The same as. It follows the norm, right? It's just bland, right? Regular. In geometry, it's super unique, which is totally backwards of what you think it is. It's the most unique picture you could have. It is a picture that has two stipulations. It is a type of polygon that, number one, is equilateral. So you've got an equilateral picture in your head. Any polygon that's equilateral, all the walls are the same. And at the same time, it's equiangular. At the same time, it's equiangular.
Okay, so does everyone have an image in their head? So what do you think? What's a picture that could be equiangular and equilateral at the same time? Any picture you can think of, any type of polygon. So equilateral, what does that mean again? Equal sides. Equiangular? Equal angles. What's a picture that could happen? Square. square. Perfect example. That's one. Okay, you could have a square. Okay, that's a great example. Most people think of that one right away. Okay, all the angles are the same. All the walls are the same. Right? The name of that, you'd call it a regular quadrilateral. That'd be the, the most unique, unique name for a square, a regular quadrilateral. It goes against everything you think. You hear the word regular and you think like plain, normal. But when you hear the word regular and you see what the definition is, it's super unique. It means a square. Think of another shape. The angles are the same, the walls are the same. What could it be? Okay, not a rectangle. Rectangle's too long. Not all the walls should be the same. Which one? Diamond. Diamond? The angles wouldn't be the same. Get out of four-sided figures. Yes. What? A box. A box? That'd still be a square. Get out of four-sided. What was that? Triangle. triangle. You, can have a, you can have a triangle where all the walls match and all the angles match. It'd be called a regular triangle. It's the most unique shape. It's equilateral and equiangular at the same time. Just call it whatever you want. You remember that Pentagon building I showed you in that little slideshow? Pentagon building? It's a regular Pentagon. It's a regular Pentagon. It's the most unique, unique shape for a Pentagon. The walls are the same, the angles are the same. Do you see how that works now? Pick any shape you want, just put regular in front. Okay. The reason I bring this up is because the book they want as many names as possible for some of these objects, so you can be super descriptive. But some of the, some of the words they give you are not intuitive. That you, it's not something you just think about. You have to really kind of understand what the word means and how to go through it. Okay, questions with the word regular, though. Okay, so now here comes the tough part, and this is going to be the tough one for all the people online. Okay, so so here is the the notes I want you to take today. This is our one slide. I have one slide. I'm going to throw it all up here and let you write it down. So apologies, there's a lot here. Not that. Not that. That. I want you to have this chart in your notes. I'm going to give you like five to six minutes. <laughs> it's going to take a while. Uh, for those online, I will move the camera closer if that makes any sense to you. Hopefully you have no glares. I might actually turn off the lights in the front of the room. Maybe that'll help. Let's get this chart in our notes. See if that affects it. Saturation. Let's see if that works. <laughs> Still didn't work. I'm just going to turn it back on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Try that to the website, but I'll email it to you here in about two seconds. Okay, yeah, good call on that one. You can just email it to you guys.
So for those who are at home, I think I just sent you an email. Should have the photo on it. Hopefully, have to. Okay. I know some of you are still writing. Fine. I'm gonna leave it up there just for a little bit. You guys can just kind of listen to me. Um, we're not going to go through all this stuff here, but I'm not going. That's not what we're doing today, right? I want to get you the picture so you can get it all copied down. Um, I'll add it to the website tonight. I need to update uh, website and get a bunch of videos working tonight, so you'll probably see a bunch of stuff being updated this weekend. So uh, hopefully, I'll have a bunch of videos on there for this week and last week and stuff. So um, this is going to drive our instruction for Monday. Now, the only thing I want to discuss today is the main terms of cross, the top, the main key concepts today. That's kind of my goal today. Um, obviously, we're dealing with formulas now. Every chapter has formulas, right? If you think back to the last chapter we did, we had formulas on distance and uh, midpoint, right? Well, this one's going to be our, kind of our formulas for this chapter. So this will be on our major chapter test. Let's talk about these keywords here. Let's talk about the word perimeter. What do you know? What is the definition of a perimeter of something? Just give me, if you had to explain it to somebody, how would you explain it? Perimeter of anything. What would it be? Give me the easiest definition. The outside. Yeah, the outside. The distance around, right? It is the distance or the the uh, the outside of an object. The distance around an object. Now, what that means, the distance around, it is length. It is length. You have to measure it. So if you have the, the perimeter of your farm, you measure it. And here's the weird thing you don't think about. It's based on polygons. You're measuring your fence. Fence is a straight line. You're measuring segments. Okay, does that make sense? You can see all the formulas up there. Okay, let's talk about circumference now. I know you're still writing, that's fine. You can keep writing all this stuff. Down. What does circumference mean? Say again. The distance around a circle. It's the distance around a circle. It's length again. Think about this. Why did they have to have a different word? Because Bradley even said it's like the distance around an object. Why do you have to have a different word for a circle? Please. A circle doesn't have sides? Yeah, you're absolutely right. A circle doesn't have straight walls. It doesn't have sides. It's a curve that doesn't end, right? It's, it's literally comes down to that it's a conic section. That's, it's a different shape completely. It's not, it's not a polygon, it doesn't have sides. It has, it's a curve, and that's a conic section. That's what a conic is. Right? A conic could be a circle, it could be a sphere, uh, it could be an ellipse, it could be a hyperbola, a parabola, um, a cone, a cylinder. It's, it's curved, right? That's the idea. And they chose a different word. Here's why. Polygon, P, polygon, P. Polygon, right? P. Perimeter. P. Circumference. Conic section. Starts with the C. That's how they measured it. That's how they, they came up with the word. They used the, the capital letter in the front. Okay, and then, so that's for circles. Now, all of them have area. So if you looked up here, every picture has an area. It didn't matter if you're on a polygon or a conic. They all have area. Could you explain what area is to me? Or does some of you wouldn't know? Please. Space on the it's the space on the inside. It's the uh, the number of square tiles on a surface. It's the number of square units in an object. That's what area is. It's the space, right? This floor has spacing. If you look at my floor, ignore how dirty it is, but if you look at the floor, do you see all the tiles? That's a square unit. We could describe this room as being so many square units, so many square tiles. It's like 720 in this room. It's 24 by 30. So about 720 square tiles. So it's that's the area of the room. 
every object has area, okay? Even a circle, I know that seems really goofy, but circles do have area. Um, so in fact, I'm gonna super zoom in on this. This is gonna seem really weird. Hopefully the people at home can see this. I'm gonna super zoom in on this here. That's just a large circle. I love that this thing can do that. Can it go any bigger? No, I maxed it out. Okay, we got a circle, right? Uh, if you're looking at how many squared units, what they do is, um, I'm gonna exaggerate this. Do you see that there's a curve there? There's a curve for the wall? Okay, so I'm exaggerating that because when you, when you start with the square units, you start so this corner hits just the circle. And do you see how there's like a little bit of space here that wasn't accounted for? Well, if you kept drawing the squares, right, kept drawing them, Da, 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 and you get to here, and then you draw the next one, and maybe it's hanging over. This little area where it hangs over usually fits perfectly right over there. It's about the same exact spacing. It can fit. So you can actually fit perfect little square units in, in a circle. Um, or And if that didn't fit, it would be one of the other pieces could fit in there perfectly from the others. So um, it's one of those things like a lot of people don't know. You can just do that. You can find area on a circle. Now, area is fine. Most people know you can put little square tiles in there and you can see there's a lot. Now, that makes sense when you start thinking about that, but how would you explain, how would you find the distance around a circle other than the formula? How would you find the distance around a circle? Like, let's say a car tire. You have a big car tire, 16, 20-inch tire. How do you find the distance around it? What would be one of the easy ways to do it without the formula? What do you think? If I want to find the distance around my car tire, how could I do that without a formula? What's one way you think you could do it? And at home, you guys can answer too. Here's how I would do it. Uh, if you had a cloth tape measure, you could, you know, have a little like a very flimsy tape measure. You could wrap it around the tire. You could measure that distance around the tire. Or a way easier way. Get really flat ground. Mark the tire and mark the floor in one swoop so that the lines are perfectly lined up. The mark on the tire and the mark on the floor. Then what you do is you hold the tire in that position and you roll it. So the tire will roll once perfectly, 360 degrees. And, and when the mark comes back to the floor, full 360, mark it again. Mark on the floor where it landed. And then just measure on the ground how far did it roll. That's the distance around the tire. Does that make sense now that you could do that? Tires are really big. Like a, even in like an 18 inch tire could roll like three or four feet on the ground. They're really big. Just a car tire. It'll roll three or four feet in one turn. So, so if you think about this, this is how a car works. Like if you have to go 55 miles per hour, you have to go, you have to travel 55 miles in one hour. So the car is just programmed to turn the wheel so many times to get you to that 55 miles. It knows one turn will take you three feet. So it figures out, calculates, okay, this is how many turns I need to make. So maybe it's a thousand turns, let's say, and I'll get to 55 miles. That's all it does. That's all it's programmed to do. It's a really weird way to think of it. It's like, oh, I only had to turn a thousand times. That's a weird way to think about distance. Or think of it this way. Maybe this is a better way for imagery to think about weirdness of numbers. Um, uh, who's a really good Olympic runner? Usain Bolt, right? Think about this. Usain Bolt, when he did his like 100, you know, 100 yard dash, right? He only had to take 23 steps. That was his race. 23, and he was done. That was it, he trained his whole life, 23 steps. His, his people, you know, his competitors, had to take 56, because he's like twice as tall as them. So he had to take 23 steps and he won. All right, it's a weird thing when you start thinking about like these numbers and like what this stuff is in terms of just like, what do we use it for? All right, it's that, it's that weirdness of numbers when you start to see the practicality of it. All right, questions about any of this weird stuff though? Okay, we have homework due today. Let me get rid of this off the board. I'm gonna zoom out so if those who are still writing, you can continue to write your formulas down. I think I sent it to everyone at home, so you should have a copy of it. Hopefully it showed up. Is everyone good? Everyone got it? All right, now homework due today, you have like, eh, I didn't send this. Have some time here. You can work on your assignment. The page 61. I'm going to put it back on the board here. So page 61. 
It's 1 through 8, 11 through 16, 19 through 21, and 40 through 42. That, that's due today. Now, for the people at home, uh, since you guys probably just, if you weren't tuned in yesterday, you probably just got it. Um, just get it done over the weekend and turn it back into me. Just email me a picture of your work. All, remember, ignore all book directions. Just write down the name of the figure that you're looking at. That's all you have to do. It's super easy. It should take you less than 10 minutes. Okay, any questions from anyone at home? Thanks for tuning in. I'll send you a link every morning so you can tune in, and then I'll post the videos online if you can get something. Hopefully it'll look better. You don't have weird glares in the board. Okay, and you can send me an email too if you need to know what, what to do. So. All right, see you guys later. Um, I'll um, see you on Monday. What study hall are you in? Uh, ninth grade. Ninth grade? Yeah. Um, okay, so I'll have you come in here. So, all right. Um, so, go to wards. You said ninth grade? Okay, ninth period. Yes. Math test. This is 925. Boom. All right. So if they ask where you're going, there's where you're going. Yes. Yeah. So you got to come in today after school. That's your last chance. So you get it. So yeah, five minutes after school, we can come in. Minimum time you have to put in. It had to be done this week. So think about it. I know she has one for Stellar, mm -hmm. but I've never seen that one. Yeah, she has two. Okay, so, okay, perfect. So I'll add that. I just wanted to make sure, because I've been getting a lot of weird fishy ones, like ones that are like from Mr. Hag, but it's not Mr. Hag. And it's like somehow they figured out a way to spoof his email. So I just wanted to confirm that with you, because I didn't want like mm -hmm. some random person like getting your email address. Yeah, it's my own. So, okay, I'll send, I'll send them an email today and I'll try to add them in. So.
out we're gonna do yet are you gonna be able to be here after school okay so could you be here Monday you think so what about the morning you sure okay right. I want you to have that opportunity but Thumbs up in the chat if you can hear me. I don't even know if you can. I'm using my headphones. I think it should be fine. Okay. Just be careful with my webcam. Don't trip on the cord. Make sure anyone. Oh.
Some people have been gone, so you can, you have like, if you've been gone, you have some time to do it still. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of time in class day if you need to make any fixes on it. Um, you can like make some fixes, turn it back in. I'm going to kind of review what you need to put on there. Um, and then we're going to add just a few notes today. You're going to have like 20 minutes at the end of class you just kind of relax. Got it? It's going to be a nice little relaxing Friday, okay? Yeah. So, so, I know. It's just one of those things that's nice to have on those days. You can just take a breather for a second, right? Uh, so, uh, but we do have, I just want to like lightly review what you needed to do for this assignment. So if you need to make any fixes or just finish it, because maybe you haven't even got to it yet. And then we are going to intro what our next section is going to be, 1.7. I'm just going to intro it. I'm going to put one slide up here, let you look it over, write it down so you get some ideas of notes. Um, let's see. Uh, I think for those who are at home tuning in, zooming, um, I, yeah, I, 